diabetes has been declared a global epidemic. The rapid rise in the number of people living with diabetes worldwide underscores the need for more effective treatments that can delay and even prevent the use of insulin injections. Researchers have been working for decades to try to develop an oral form of insulin that can be released through the digestive system, mimicking the body's natural production of insulin. One company has achieved a scientific breakthrough in the oral delivery of proteins and is on track to be the first to bring an oral insulin capsule to market. Oramed Pharmaceuticals will soon be entering phase three trials for their oral insulin capsule. And joining us remotely is the company's CEO, Nadav Kidron. Thank you for joining us today, Nadav. Thank you for having me. To better understand what is contributing to this rising epidemic, can you explain how diabetes works on a cellular level and how it progresses from something that is manageable through diet and exercise to the point of insulin dependence? Diabetes is a disease where someone is not able to produce enough insulin or the insulin that he has is meeting some insulin resistance. What does the insulin do? The insulin is a hormone that takes the, glu the glucose from our blood into the cells. If someone doesn't have enough insulin, then we get an accumulation of the glucose in the blood and that then creates many, many issues that we don't want to have. If we look around us, more than 7% of the population suffer from diabetes. Type 2 make up to 90 to 95% of the total diabetes population. So if we look at them, what happens is that one day someone discovers that they have a high level of glucose in their blood. The best drug that was ever invented and the cheapest drug that's around, which I would highly recommend for anyone to use, is actually to exercise and to eat less sugar. Unfortunately, many of us don't do it. In the Western world and in the non-Western world, many of us keep on eating and we become heavier, actually causes and encourages diabetes. So we start with different medications that maybe sometimes help us get more insulin into the body and eventually we end by becoming insulin dependent patients that we need to get an insulin injection in order for us to live. Oral insulin is touted as the holy grail because of the potential improvement in quality of life for the many diabetic patients who are dependent on daily insulin injections. Beyond quality of life, what is the attractiveness of oral insulin when compared to injected insulin? When you think about diabetes, you think about people who do not have a sufficient amount of insulin in the body. Today, the only way we can deliver insulin is via an injection, and the injection goes straight into the bloodstream. When we give insulin orally, it goes into the portal vein, which takes it directly into the liver. It's what we call first pass into the liver. The reason it's so important to deliver the insulin into the liver is because the liver is the organ that regulates the secretion of the insulin into the bloodstream. By doing so, we mimic the physiological way that the body works, and we're able to let the body gain the control and signal to the liver that there's insulin in the system, and therefore shut off the excessive production of glucose by the liver, and get their, their glucose level to be lowered than any other way. What portion of the diabetic population can benefit from oral insulin, and how can it be used to not only treat existing diabetes, but also halt its progression? Type 2 diabetics make up to over 90% of the total diabetic population. Oramid's oral insulin is aiming at those type 2 at their earlier own point before the point that they need an injection. So they start with diet and exercise, then they will go into the oral insulin and we leave the injection as the last resort. By treating those type 2 diabetics earlier on with oral insulin can allow them a better control of the type 2 better lifestyle, and hopefully much lower costs of treating diabetes. What has previously slowed progress towards a scientific breakthrough in the oral delivery of insulin, and how have you moved past these obstacles? If you ask yourself, how come many of the injections we take them as an injection, how come we don't take it orally? It's much easier, and the patient's compliance level is going to be much higher. The answer is that peptides such as insulin if we were to put them in a capsule, we are not going to be able to deliver them orally because it will get degraded. And because of the molecular size of the peptide, 
it's not going to go through the gut wall and reach the bloodstream. It will just going to go into waste. Oramed's technology allows us to protect it by coating it in a coating that is sensitive to the pH level and by putting materials in it and that can protect it from the degradation. We can overcome the challenge of delivering those peptides such as insulin and deliver them orally. Some researchers have expressed concern about oral insulin, stating that short-acting insulins or intermediate-acting insulins have too much variation in absorption levels to be safe. Do you think that there is any validity to this concern? Yeah, I think there is validity to the concern, but you have to remember that when we want to introduce the oral insulin, we're talking about an earlier on patient. And the idea is that by taking it earlier on, we can potentially push off the point that they need to inject. So by targeting those groups of population, then a little bit of volatility is legitimate. By the way, I would tell you that also with the injecting insulin, we also have a not a small level of volatility as well. What are your next clinical development steps as you move forward towards a phase three study and look ahead to potential regulatory approval of your insulin capsule? Currently, we're undergoing a 90 days dosing trial that's taking place entirely in the United States. There are 40 centers across the United States that are recruiting 240 patients who are type 2 to take the oral insulin and to show the reduction in the glucose level after it being administered with our oral insulin. After this 90 days trial, we aim to start a phase 3, which is the last trial needed before someone can enter the market. Along with the United States, Oramed is also working on getting the approval to market the oral insulin in China, Hong Kong, and Macau. Oramed has got a partner in China that is moving forward the whole process with the Chinese FDA, and we're doing the two tracks parallel. Well, thank you again for joining us today, Nadav. I'm sure a lot of people will be closely watching the progression of Oramed's clinical trial process. Thank you very much for having me. For the more than 400 million people living with diabetes worldwide, I think we can fortunately say that the questions surrounding oral insulin have now turned from if to when.